All right, man. Floor is yours. Uh, I'd like to walk you through a little bit of a fiscal year 19 recap. Uh, start by just kind of summarizing that fiscal year 19, in all of our funds, um, we ended up in a good position for fiscal year 20. Uh, in the general fund, our original revenue budget was 4975000 $5, At the six month mark, we presented some revised projections. We didn't actually amend the budget, but we did some revised projections. At which point we uh, increased that to the expected five million four hundred and thirty-five thousand, which is being supported at fifty-nine thousand over the budget amount, and a large portion of that was in anticipation of the FEMA reimbursement for the West Summit Street project that was from 2015. Our actual revenue for this year 19 uh, is actually a little bit better than that. It's five million five hundred and eighty-four thousand, so about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars over projections. <coughs> Expenditure wise, we budgeted $4,963,000. When we did those six month projections, we decreased that a little bit to $4,926,000. And actual expenditures $4,789,000. So we came in about $137,000 under budget expenditures. So what does that do to our cash position? Uh, we anticipated that we would end fiscal year 19 with about uh, $2.8 million. Add in the additional 150,000 over what we projected, and add in the 137,000 over under budget expenditures, uh, brings our actual ending cash balance from fiscal year 19 to just over $3 million. Now, uh, that's $286,000 more than what we projected, and $3 million sounds like an amazing number, uh, which it is, but keep in mind that $1.8 million of that is already being set aside for that 40% reserve that is uh, required by the policy. So that really leaves about 1.2 million in actual cash balance and uh, about 600,000 of that uh, through the fiscal year 20 budget is actually already reserved for some CIP expenses. So $3 million total cash balance, 1.8 in the reserve, that leaves 1.2 left. 600,000 of that is already accounted for. It's about $600,000 in, in uh, free or uh, unappropriated dollars at this point. Uh, so let's look a little bit into the general fund at kind of some, what I call some big misses or big gains. This could be on the revenue side or on the expense side, just kind of some ideas on where I was, I was just really off on our budget. So uh, sales tax revenue is a little bit relative to budget one million and thirty-four thousand. Projection wise, we increased that to one million forty-five, and we actually received one million eighty thousand. It's about three and a half percent over what we projected. Electricity franchise tax uh, revenue budgeted just under four hundred thousand. Uh, in the projections, we actually reduced that a little bit to three seventy-six, and the actual revenue was four hundred and thirty. Seven pound franchise tax fees. Uh, budgeted at 165, and our projections we increased that a little bit to 169, and the actual revenue was 133. That one's a little bit tricky. Uh, as I uh, came in here and, and over the last couple of years, I've really been digging into some things. Uh, there's a good portion of telecom money that comes from AT&T uh, that looks very similar to cable TV franchise money when it comes in. So those were uh, being mixed up a little bit and took a little bit of time to work with AT&T so that they could, when they were sending in those checks to us, we could better communicate on what exactly we were receiving from them. So uh, that 169 uh, is actually, the original budget of 165 and the projection of 169, both of those numbers uh, were kind of based on some raw information. So that 133 is a little more of a true number. Um, and in addition to that, that type of revenue seems to be declining anyway as more people uh, get rid of their home service. And in fact, that's, that's not limited to, to us. I mean, it's, that's just a general statement. Both phone and cable. Uh, grant revenue, this is the line item where we originally budgeted zero. And in that projection, we changed that to 416000 That was the FEMA reimbursement. Our actual revenue is 473000 and that, that $57,000 difference or so, um, while we anticipated receiving some FEMA money, we didn't realize that SEMA, State Emergency Management Agency, was also going to give us a little bit of reimbursement. So that was a nice little surprise that we weren't expecting. 
Those in current revenue on the other hand, uh, budgeted 260. During our projection, we reduced that to 242, just based on the numbers that were coming in at that time, which was in the spring, so they were early. Um, our actual revenue was about 162,000. And I know in my report that uh, there was a lot of limitations on that, about number of lots available, shortage of contractors. Um, but we do see that growth is still out there ready for us. And uh, Jack is anticipating a lot of that coming year in 20. And if I think a couple of things there too, and we've talked about that over the last few weeks, our residential numbers are not what they've been in the past, but we are seeing commercial numbers. Thing here, um, I think we also anticipated in these numbers that a permit would be pulled um, for the um, price shopper that had not been pulled yet. So there are some of those things that it's really kind of a matter of timing. Um, and we, Jack and Dan and I meet um, really almost on a monthly basis trying to look at, okay, where do we need, where are we, where do we think we're going to be, and, and, and what are those book permits looking like. And that affects not only the building permits, it affects the impact fees. Um, and so there, there are a number of different things that are affected there. So we're keeping a close eye on that as we watch development for increase. Has price chopper been in yet? Has yeah. price chopper been in or is it still set up front? Uh, oh, no, they got it. They're good to go. They're just waiting until they know when they can get concrete for the walls. And the permit on that is like 50000 right? A little more. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't say 62 is what we talked about. It's a, it's a pretty big chunk of that mm -hmm. dollar amount. Mm -hmm. uh, the next revenue item is our core revenue. This is actually really nice. Uh, we budgeted 188000 uh, and that was with the anticipation that we were going to operate the court here for six months and then transfer it to Clay County for the second six months of the year. We actually transferred it only two months into the year, so that's two months of revenue here, ten months of revenue at the county. Uh, and because of that early transfer, uh, we had to do a lot of things with we dismissed some cases and things like that. So we really lowered that projection number down to 149, but the actual revenue came in at 179. So that is actually looking a lot better uh, than we had anticipated at the that big mark of the year. Are we going to do a uh, work, work session at some point? I know we talk about We are going to need to do that, yeah. Uh, and that last item, the interest revenue, the original budget was 90000 Interest rates have been really good this year, uh, so we increased our projection to 174,000, and actual revenue is 199,000. Pays for some playground equipment. On the expansion side of things, uh, professional services and the street department original budget was 780 dollars. That's not thousand, which is 780 dollars. Projection we increased that to 77 thousand. That's Amory Road Engineering. That's what that increase in projection. And then actual expenditures were 120,000. Um, of that additional 40 grand or so, 25 of that was the easement that we approved. That was a little bit unexpected. And then uh, the other 15,000 or so has to do with we actually uh, spent spent quite a bit of money to uh, rent those detour signs that are out there for Amory. So those came out of that same budget line that too. Uh, professional services in the development department, original budget was 70000 We revised that to be 62000 and we only spent 31000 A big piece of that is uh, our contract with IBTS. In the absence of that building inspector who's on military leave, we contract with IBTS to come in and perform uh, inspections as needed, and we haven't utilized them quite as much as we needed to, and that probably relates back to that building permit. Part of that is related to the price shopper and the building permits and not having as much to divert to them. So the think, reduced revenue can be spent less as well. Do you think we're going to need them this year as well still? So still, still out? And we, can do, we are utilizing them right now and there are a couple advantages to them. One is a different set of bodies on that things. That's also, um, Jack and I were just having this conversation today. Uh, their conversations with our staff have been very robust and our staff has learned a lot in it and a different set of eyes. Um, all of the members of our staff are looking at the certification process and practicing for testing for that. So this is this is actually helpful to them in that process and, and they've had really good discussions about what they're looking at. So it's been beneficial to us. We do see it continuing. Uh, Jack and I had a conversation earlier today. I think March would be the earliest we would see. A return of our staff member, maybe. Um, so, uh, 
Uh, we're waiting on, we we have to have clearance for, he's got to be cleared for the military for return. So. But even with the, with him coming back, do you think we're still going to need to use them with the commercial to one, one park and now Rollins Landing and Eagle Heights, Eagle Ridge and, and Randy Wine and all these new subdivisions? From a commercial standpoint, I think it would best be handled on a case by case. If it's a big commercial one thing, if it's a smaller commercial, it's another. We'd have to just wait and see what we get. We, so we have to have a contract with them. Mm -hmm. We have enough in contact, and, and Jack, correct me if I'm wrong, we have continued to do the residential in the house. Yes. So. Except for planning. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So we take new steps and then it would be. Right. Which one? Planning. Planning. Oh, okay. Because there's, yeah, we've got white iron rays, it's got a foundation going in right now, we've got one part going in, and yeah. A lot of commercial. Yes. Cool. The last expansion line I have on here, parks and recreation parks on wages. Uh, this this has kind of gone up and down in recent years, but our budget was twenty one thousand. Uh, projection we increased out to thirty one thousand. The actual is only came in at twelve thousand. So uh, not as much part time help over the summer. Uh, specifically in like the summer maintenance piece, there's a separate line item for recreation wages. So we're not talking about recreation. Is that just because we couldn't find people, or is it? It's probably a combination of a lot of those things that work in the lack of applications. Okay. This is actually how the campground took down a lot of the street of the next year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of the work we had, if we switch over from Rec 2, we split it up a lot. Okay. In the capital projects line, original revenue budget is just under four million. Projection of revenue, we increased that about two hundred thousand uh, dollars. We anticipated that we were going to sell that bond as a, a premium, and we did. So actual revenue is four million one eighty two. So we we're real close right there. Expenditure wise, budgeted five point six million. Uh, in the projection, we changed that just a little bit to be five million five hundred eighty eight thousand. And actual expenditure is only 4.2 million. So it looks like we underspent this budget a lot. A big piece of that is the Main Street Trail, which was in the 19 budget, uh, which, as you know, we just had that uh, kind of public information session a couple weeks ago. So uh, haven't even gotten to that project at all yet. So we anticipated cash, uh, any cash balance of just under 300,000. Uh, take into the fact, uh, into account that we're just a little bit under projections and revenue quite a bit under projection expenditures, one million six hundred and fifty four thousand dollar cash balance. So we'll talk about that for a little bit more here than the CIP. Um, capital improvement sales tax fund, budgeted four sixty five. Uh, we changed that projection to be four thirty three. Uh, that four hundred and sixty five thousand dollar budget number was really based on twelve months of anticipated revenue. And now we know that that first year of the sales tax we're going to be eleven months um, so that's why we reduced that projected revenue to 433, but actual revenue came in at 451, so right in the middle of the Expenditure wise, uh, this fund only makes a transfer to the debt service fund to pay the debt service uh, payments. So we anticipated 127, 127,000 was uh, but our projection was that it's actually what we transferred over. So uh, we projected to have a cash, any cash balance of 305. Our actual cash balance is 323. Debt service fund, very simple fund. It <laughs> takes in that transfer from capital improvement sales tax and then goes ahead and pays those debt payments. So exactly what we transferred in is exactly what we paid out. Uh, no cash balance in this fund at all. Transportation sales tax fund, uh, budgeted of that same half cent sales tax revenue, 465000 uh, when we did our projections, we increased that to 467000 and actual revenue came in at $531,000. We'll talk about that here in a second. So uh, that's, that's an inflated number a little bit. Expenditure-wise, we budgeted six eleven. We revised that to be five hundred and fourteen, and actually spent six hundred and three. So even though we were quite a bit over our projections in this fund, we were still under our budget, which is okay. Projected ending cash balance was 256000 
take into revenue being over expenditures being over our projections are actually cash balance two hundred and thirty one thousand. Now there's a we have to account for uh, some leases in a pretty specific way, and we approved that five year lease for the skid steer loader. Um, we actually have to treat that as basically like a loan from the company, and we're buying the equipment, and then we're paying that lease uh, five times every five years. So of that five hundred thirty one thousand revenue and that six hundred three thousand dollars of expenditures, um, there's thirty four thousand dollars in what we call debt from uh, bond, debt from Proceeds from debt issue, uh, and then that same thirty-four thousand is in this number for buying that five-year lease. So both of those numbers uh, are, are over; they appear overinflated, but it's just how we have to account for some things. So if you take thirty-four thousand off of that number, that half cent sales tax revenue is really about four hundred ninety-six thousand. In the uh, water and wastewater systems fund, uh, original budget was nine million six hundred seventy-four thousand. Original budget number included the two thousand eighteen COPs, which we actually got eighteen out of nineteen. So we reduced that expected revenue number to four point four million one hundred sixty-one thousand. We actually received three million nine hundred sixteen thousand on top of that. Budgeted expenditures, budget uh, ten and a half million, we reduced that to nine million two hundred and eighty-three thousand. A big piece of that reduction, this number is wrong. I don't know where I got that number. Uh, a big part of that reduction is we anticipated not the full completion of that influent pump station and so slow holding a south sewer interceptor project. And we were right and we spent uh, just about nine million dollars. So um, revenue was a little bit under projections, expenditures were a little under projections. Uh, net wise, they didn't change their cash balance all that much. Uh, projected nine million, four million nine hundred forty nine thousand, and actual cash balance is four million nine hundred seven thousand. A lot of those dollar amounts, uh, we also have a, a twenty. Part of that is a twenty percent policy required reserve. Plus, there's restricted money for water impact fees, wastewater impact fees. So uh, that's not. That money isn't all available to use either. Yeah, specifically in this one, we'll take a look at some of those revenue <coughs> expense line items. Uh, water sales, uh, original budget was 2.1, projection was 2.2, and actual payment at 2.2, which is a little under that projection, so included in here. Wastewater sales, original budget was just under 1.1, and uh, so was the projection, but we actually came in at about one, just under one and a quarter. So we saw ourselves up. Connection revenue, this is tied to building permits as well as new connection, new water connections to our system. Budget of 79,000, we revise that to be 85, and actually we received 36. And then there's your water impact fees, wastewater impact fees, which were well under what we projected those to be. On the expenditure side, uh, some good items, some miscellaneous repairs and maintenance of the water plant and wastewater plant. Uh, both of those came in well under our budget and our projection projected figures. Uh, similarly to the connection revenue, our connection supplies expense came in quite a bit under budget. Our electricity had a little bit of an uptick. Um, that was uh, we anticipated uh, the uh, onboarding of our new wastewater plant in our electricity budget, but clearly our electricity costs came in a little bit more. And then capital projects, uh, there's the 6.8 million for that pump station project. We reduced that to 5.8 and actually spent uh, just over six, so about $800,000 in savings in that uh, account there. Last fund we'll talk about real quick is the sanitation fund. Budget and revenue is 811000 We reduced that projection to about seven ninety five. dollars Actual revenue is 779000 Budget of expenditure for 806. We revised that to be 796, and actual expenditures were 786. So this fund actually did take a little bit of a, a decrease in its cash balance. We projected it to be 35,000. It's actually about 28,000. Um, I've alluded to this a little bit in some of my other presentations. Um, if, if people were not paying, if, if customers were not paying their utility bills in full, usually that item that was left unpaid was our trash 
cash service. So we've actually corrected that uh, with the new budget here. And we, uh, if somebody only pays their bill partially, uh, the first three things that get paid are sales tax, DNR fees, and trash, because that's the thing that's in this one. So we want to make sure that that's uh, where we're getting the full amount of that as much as we can. And uh, kind of on a side note, we really don't want this number to be too high in the way. If it is, that means we're overcharging. So that's only a thousand dollar figure. So that's it for our fiscal year 19 recap. Uh, really pleased with the way all those funds uh, ended up. Do you guys have any questions on any of that? Okay. Not. We're going to sit here and talk a little bit about the CRP. CIP. We're really going to talk about a bunch of men, uh, which is on your agenda for tonight, and also kind of ties into the CIP a little bit. So I, I uh, included in your packet a staff report on a fiscal year uh, 20 budget amendment. It's actually kind of made up of a few different things, but we'll talk about the fiscal year 19 carryovers first. So there's two carryovers that we know in that staff report I just talked about a little bit earlier here. Uh, this pump station, excess flow holding tank, and sewer interceptor project. We anticipated that that wasn't quite going to be completed for the end of the year, but it's not going to get into the fiscal year 20 budget. Um, so, therefore, uh, we need to do a budget amendment. There's 739000 left in contracted costs on that project, so we're going to add 739500 for uh, project costs there. Uh, but just kind of as a side note, uh, that's that project is being funded through that COP. We already have that money, so not going to get into our system at all on that. Um, the other carryover that we're going to talk about is in the capital projects fund. Um, I noted in my recap that we were about $1.3 million under budget or under, uh, under our expenditure budget in that fund. The big piece of that was the Main Street Show project. We anticipated that that wasn't going to be complete, so we rebudgeted it in fiscal year 20. But we assumed that the South Commercial Trail Sidebox project was going to be complete, and it is not um, at this point. So there's 371,000 left on that contract. So I'd like to uh, include in the budget and then uh, adding 371,000 to uh, this year 20 capital projects fund to complete that project. Is there any quick questions or commentary on the two fiscal year 19? carryovers. Okay, so then the other uh, part of the budget amendment that was in the staff report, uh, the first is with uh, the water and wastewater systems fund. So uh, I'll try to talk through this kind of as best as I can. Hopefully you can see it helps a little bit. We originally had in the budget this $92,200 for engineering on the river crossing 12 inch water line. Um, we had $75,000 in the budget uh, for the ballot box engineering. We had $50,000 in the fis projected fiscal year 21 budget for zero muscle control. And then at the time, we had this raw water pump station number uh, that we weren't, weren't really sure exactly where that was going to fall. In talking with our engineers, uh, they've advised us that this valve box, raw water pump station, and zebra muscle control, those three projects really are tied together. And they recommended that it would be in our interest to do all three of those at the same time. And in that conversation, they uh, recommended that this river crossing waterline project uh, can be delayed at least one year. So what I'm showing you graphically here is, is we're going to remove this 92200 for this engineering from the 20 budget. We're going to add it into the 21 CIP plan. We're going to remove this 50000 that was in the 21 budget for zero muscle control and move it up to the 20 budget. And we're going to add in 330000 for more engineering on the low station. This, those changes will allow us to do the engineering for these three projects all in this year, all kind of together as one piece, uh, and then look at construction 
uh, low as the construction, but here's the uh, valve box project, here's the raw water pump station project, here's the zero residential project, all in 21. Now, the one question that you guys might have is why does this say 1,329,000, but you only have 329,000 here? Uh, that other million we're going to take from water impact fees. That is a, a project that uh, is directly impacting, impacting our system. Um, and as we prepare for future growth and things like that, um, we're gonna, that's a perfect use for that impacting money. So we're going to take a partial uh, payment for that project out of those, those impact fees. Overall, what does that do to our fund? Uh, here's our projected cash balance. This is after the 20% reserve. This is after we pull out water impact fee money in wastewater impact fee money. There's actually 1.3 million in cash. Here's our revenues, expenditures, CFP expenditures from above as revised or as, as proposed to be amended would leave us with a cash balance in the water wastewater system fund of $274,000 still. Now as we move forward, we clearly have a need here for some additional uh, money. These are some big projects, very big projects in here couple places. Uh, we're going to be looking at CIP or COP, additional COP debt as our 2012 COPs fall off. Um, we're also doing the water and sewer uh, rate increases or proposing those rate increases, increases as our tell us uh, advised us to do. So we're, a lot of this could be in flux a little bit. Um, and obviously the timing of these projects can be, can be moved around a little bit too. But the biggest priority here is, is this budget amendment to uh, be able to do the engineering on those three projects um, as soon as possible. Any questions on that piece? <coughs> then the final piece is downtown streetscape east. So uh, the short summary of this is as uh, HDR presented to you guys for that. It's no, that was November 18th. Um, you guys had, had some suggestions to them uh, on changing some street lighting and not doing full curb replacement and doing some uh, just partial curb replacement. So we re received some revised estimates from them and they look sort of like this. Uh, let's ignore the piece and I'm writing three numbers for each second. So here's engineering on that piece of downtown streetscape, then there's a bunch of different options here. And the option um, after, as we rise after that presentation on November 18th, this is for the street, the piece from Main Street to Smith. This would be brick accents, lighting, asphalt, and partial curve, $576,000 for that piece. Then from uh, uh, from Smith to Liberty, this would be the trail on the north side, brake accents, lighting on the north side, full asphalt, but only partial curb, uh, 410,000 for that piece. So both projects together, 986,500. We do have enough cash available to complete that project at that $986,000 price tag, but we need to reach into four funds to do it. So let's talk through this. Let's start showing all this great. I said, I talked about you in this finance committee. We received a revised estimate on November 14th for that project of $1,140,000. So if we remove $106,000 from the budget based on that revised estimate, then we budgeted $15,000 for engineering on the North Bridge, a uh, North Streetscape project, $240,000 construction for the North Streetscape project. We removed both of those from the budget. Then we have enough cash available in here to pay for the $55,000 engineering and the first $315,000 of that project. That essentially will take this cash balance to 
zero. I know it says negative two, but I'm not going to let it go up to negative two dollars. So just going to go around and Jeff gets one. Not three dollars from the other one. <laughs> so we can accomplish basically a third of the project by utilizing what's left in the capital projects fund. This is a good thing because we have to expend all of that money by February of 21 anyway. Uh, it can be because those are bond proceeds. Those are bond proceeds. We have to spend it two years from the issues. Uh, this could be complicated a little bit by those actual construction uh, projects coming in at what well, the engineers estimate that. But as our estimations sit right now, we can fund a third of the project uh, from this fund. We're going to look towards the capital improvement sales tax fund for the rest of this or for the next piece of the project. This fund has a cash balance of 323000 The projected absent sales tax is 475 We are going to transfer 556000 in the debt service fund this year. That is to make the payments in fiscal year 20, and that is also to fund enough of a cash balance in the debt service fund for the first 2021 payment so we're going to end fiscal year 20 with a cash balance to where we can make the first fiscal year 21 payment, even if we don't get any revenue at all. And that's consistent with the direction we received from the board as we were working through the budget development process. Correct. Then we would be able to fund 242000 the next $242,000 of streetscape from this fund. This would take the cash balance of this one down to zero. But this fund doesn't need a cash balance as long as it's making those transfers to debt service. So this, this fund is available to, in addition to pay those debt service repayments, it's, it's for capital projects. So we can absolutely use that cash balance in the pioneer. And even though we'd be using the cash balance down to zero from this year, you can see that the cash balance does accumulate back up in future years. And also keep in mind the half cent sales tax this year generated 496,000. Our budget's only 475, so we're uh, we're probably expecting more than 475,000 in revenue. Right okay. But it can fund the next four, 240,000. We'll get a couple of bucks off top of it. Sure, sure. Couple of bucks. Just breakfast. Just breakfast. <laughs> then we're going to jump over to the general fund. I'm going to scroll to the bottom first. The general fund, this is that $1.2 million that I kind of talked about us having as available money. We're going to spend about half of that in the fiscal year 20 budget, as it is for Amory, um, for these heritage park improvements, for city hall improvements, for the conference plan. But there is enough cash balance to fund. This is the last 18000 of this first half of the project, and 210000 of the second piece of this project. That would leave $200,000 unfunded here. But in the transportation sales tax fund, we uh, already set aside $200,000 for a yet to be determined curb and stormwater program. And part of this state project definitely is curb and stormwater related. So we can shift that 200 from being designated for that to the downtown street safety east project. That doesn't change the fund, kind of uh, in the cash balance of this fund really at all. That, that 200,000 is already budgeted, we should move it to a different project. General fund wise, bouncing back to the general fund, spending this 18,000 to finish that first piece and spending 200 for half of essentially that second piece, that will leave us with a cash balance of about 370,000. This is half, this is over and above that $1.8 million reserve. So really we're talking about $2.1 million. Uh, but $370,000 unrestricted cash balance. The finance committee felt comfortable with a $370,000 unrestricted cash balance. If you guys don't, feel free to let me know that. Moving forward in the general fund, as we kind of talked about earlier, this doesn't look great. 
cash balance goes down to 28, that goes negative. But a lot of those spent expenses are related to those parks projects that we kind of have mapped out for the next five years. So if we move those projects over to this parks and recreation sales tax, as I showed you guys earlier, we delete those projects out of the general fund. That does suddenly turn our cash balance back to the positive side. The other thing to take into consideration is, well, not only the, the park sales tax items, uh, as we project the revenues for those kind of balances going forward are fairly conservative sales tax estimates as well. Can they 2% annual or 3%? It's 1%. 1% annual increase. One, 1 increase. And we've talked a lot tonight about a lot of that commercial growth that's going in. So <clears throat> we want to be conservative in looking at that. Um, but I, I think we're cautiously optimistic in as well. And, and part of the reason why we use one percent as well is uh, when we uh, originally did the planning for the bond issuances and all of that. Uh, our financial advisor Todd Goffey also used a conservative one percent. Uh, so it kind of it kind of fits nicely yeah. that we want to. We don't want to. <laughs> as much as we think we might have a better increase than that, we don't necessarily want to deviate from that plan too much. So as long as you guys are comfortable, uh, well, I should let me rephrase this a different way. Um, <coughs> yes, we're comfortable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the budget amendment as presented in your regular session agenda tonight uh, would fund the downtown streetscape east project as we just discussed. So if you're comfortable with that, we feel when, comfortable with that. When would that go out to the yeah. With downtown streetscape east. Um, we actually have the engineering authorization would go to you guys on the 7th after second reading of the budget amendment. Right. Yeah, we want to make sure that we get the budget amendment. Uh, I have in my notes to tomorrow, let Aaron know of this discussion, and I mean, they would be ready to roll as soon as we even have first, first reading on the movie. So early January, they'll be able to, to get that around, and we had anticipated a spring bid. I believe we anticipated in late winter. April. April award. Yeah. Yeah. So probably February. February. Make February. sure the first payments come out of that one, out of the bond process. And when it seems like we're carrying over some, <laughs> some other projects. Am I reading my Main Street trail? Well, when does when do we start street skate? When is that construction and everything? Once we've got bids, then we come in, we, my guess on a time frame like that, notice to proceed would be within receipt of bids. That's how the bids are here. That's how the bids are here from the last time. Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. I would say you know, probably a, a early summer timeline. I think so too. Now it won't be affecting specifically yeah. immediately on town, but it will have, have an impact. And is this, do you think this is going to longer to complete than the, the other stuff did, or? There it's only one block. block. Yeah, so no block outs. Those, those things it's are two blocks, blocks, but it, it definitely not as long. Jack, do you, your thought? I mean, it's way, I mean, it's going to be easier to do build overlay in June and July than, then, or, than November. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be completed before school starts and everything, right? So certain parades and stuff. We can surely pass that on to the And the other thing, you know, depending on one, you know, the contractor, particularly in the case of Streetscape, I know there were some, some issues, but they worked with us very well on that. Uh, and so I think there are things that we worked on. Honestly, the only thing on that block is Montessori School that faces that as the streets. So, I mean, they could shut down that whole block and rip it all out and be done quick instead of trying to do half the side and do the other half like we yeah. have in the streets. There's no front, there's no front, yeah, there's no back, there's no easier front door. Yeah. We don't have the right The access will be a lot different than what we dealt with. I think it's the other thing is there's empty lots or sides of things. Like it's, side entrances. Yeah. Because the Apollo House has a back entrance as well. So. Mm -hmm. I, I just hope they can tear it out. I would hope it would be, would be more, more quick. More quick. More quicker. quicker. Mm -hmm. Creating a new one. Once the DX open. No. Yeah, let's do it. Did everybody follow our uh, flow chart of funds there? Yeah, I mean, everything looked like it was creative and efficient. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yeah. But, 
and I have an exam where we spend a lot of time in, in looking at the numbers, finding out where everything will fit, what can happen here, while um, keeping in mind the direction that you all have provided on priorities of, of in, in all those funds. So we think we've ticked all those boxes. Um, if there are concerns, obviously, um, let us know, but um, we feel good about the plan as presented. And I, I would appreciate the, the what if of taking those projects out of the gym with the sales package, which that helped a lot with yeah. looking at overall. Yeah, understanding and not. Mm -hmm. Yep, if we get it. Yeah, it, right, absolutely. That, that, that makes the importance of being able to have that to provide those, those amenities as well. Um, and, and as I said, also, hopefully, um, we will see um, greater than, than budgeted increase also in our, in our sales tax and really starting to see some. Fourth, fifth, eighth, sixth, the other. And really, one thing I didn't mention that it's included in the budget amendment, so I should be clear about it. Uh, the capital projects fund uh, did not include or did not specifically, the fiscal year 20 budget of the capital projects fund did not have the reimbursement from the recreation <coughs> trails program grant in it this year. Um, it actually had it was on, in the list on fiscal year 21. So the budget amendment also moves that up as expected by the Thank you. And we, just as a brief update on the Main Street Trail, we, um, uh, continue to await NEFA review for the uh, the grant, uh, and you know our engineers are awaiting not complete final engineering until we have all of those reviews done. Uh, so we are in communication with them on a consistent basis, uh, and hope to be able to get that in spring as well to be able to to pull that out. Um, there are a couple of pieces of that process that. There are some environmental um, issues that we'll have to make sure that we take care of relating to bats and trees, and tree removal will need to occur before March 31st. So we're in constant communication with um, the, the engineers on, you know, if we have to do that in house or if we're going to address that, we'll, we'll take care of that if we start pushing up against that time frame. So. We love our bat trees. We have to make requirements um, related to, to grants and other processes. We buy those. Anything else? For Dan? Anything from Cynthia? I know, I know she did all the work for Dan this present. I give Dan all, all the, the credit on this. He absolutely, Dan does a, a tremendous job and we appreciate his efforts. Cool. Anything else? I have a question. It's probably more for Nikki. Um, how's Main Street, Missouri Main Street, coming along? Are they doing any, have any meetings or anything? Missouri Main Street. Missouri Main Street. Yeah, yeah. And actually, in my report, I will have, so February 10th, we will have um, the initial meeting, and then the informational kickoff meeting. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, town Hall. Town Hall. Town Hall meeting. So 6 o'clock, February 10th at the high school cafeteria. We'll need that town hall meeting, basically, basically explaining the um, Main Street program to the community. Uh, as I think a couple of weeks ago, which is probably now closer to a month, we had an initial meeting of a number of the downtown business owners, the historic district group. Um, we had probably about a dozen people here and that Main Street reps and starting to work through the process and um, identify that date. So we'll be publicizing that as well. And also as part of the Main Street program, uh, members of our, our Main Street group will be attending a number of training sessions um, hosted by and sponsored by Main Street program. Uh, there's one in Kansas City this spring. Uh, they have a national conference that you know, we may have had a way of looking at, but look forward to being able to share those resources and, and information gleaned from other communities as they've progressed through, through those processes as well. And then we've got the comp plan kickoff. Comp plan kickoff will be February, or excuse me, January 13th, that's a Monday, at 6 o'clock at the school, uh, in the cafeteria as well. And we'll begin promoting that as well. We are working with David uh, in establishing a portal similar to what we utilized through the strategic planning process. Um, 
he's working on the agenda for that kickoff meeting, and it will be kind of a combination of um, education, background, launch information, and starting to get our hands dirty getting to work. Um, prior to that, prior to that, very. Let's just not break this one. We, yeah, we'll be careful in transport. <laughs> <laughs> we'll avoid that. <laughs> um, we are working uh, to. There's a big discussion in the planning commission level of a steering committee, um, predominantly comprised of that group, with a couple of additional individuals uh, to move that process as we roll along. Uh, Jack and I are having conversations with David and the. Uh, uh, he's working with an economic development consulting firm out of Washington, D.C., as part of that project as well. And uh, we will have uh, our, our next call will be right after the first few years to really kind of map out the rest of that process. Cool. With that, I'll let you have a motion to adjourn our guests since it's the work session. Josh. And move to adjourn the work session. Do have a second? Or second. All in favor, attorney, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. <coughs> See you again in like 20 minutes. Take care. Do you want this now? <laughs>